you have to have that belief in your heart of hearts that you can achieve whatever it is that you've set out to do, regardless of what people say, what people, you know, um, do, what if they laugh at you, all those sort of things. You have to believe it. In the dark times, what, what kind of kept you motivated? Um, it's funny, it's interesting that you ask in the dark times what kept me motivated because I always refer to those times as dark times. And the reason I use the phrase dark times is because we can always shed some light on those dark times. Um, so it's interesting that you use that, that, that quote. There's one thing that I am a firm believer that gets you through the dark times. And, and you know, I had some during my athletics career. I spent um, halfway from 1988, halfway through that year, all the way up until 1991, injured, um, didn't compete, um, tried to train, would break down, have to have operations, go for all the rehab treatment, get back into training, break down, have another operation, go for all the rehab. And, and it was a bit like Groundhog Day. I was doing the same things over and over and over. And I didn't compete for a couple of years. And lots of people always used to ask me, what kept you going? You know, why didn't you give up? And believe you me, there was, there was a voices in my head telling me to give up but the one thing and the single there were lots of things but the one main thing that kept me going through those times was the belief that if I could stay healthy I could be one of the best 400 meter runners in the world it was that self-belief of what I could do you know my opposition wasn't the competition or my competition wasn't the opposition my competition was my own body staying healthy and I always used to say God help the rest of the world if I stay in shape for a couple of seasons and don't have any injuries because they won't know what's hit them. And you have to have that belief in your heart of hearts that you can achieve whatever it is that you've set out to do, regardless of what people say, what people, you know, um, do, what, if they laugh at you, all those sort of things. You have to believe it because there will come a time when that's all you've got to hang on to when you're going through these dark times. You know, that's the one bit of rope that's going to help you walk towards the end of that tunnel, that self-belief. And, you know, I always say that if you don't believe in your hearts of hearts that you can achieve whatever it is that you, you are striving for, then I would suggest that you're chasing the wrong dream. You know, I, you know, I do believe that you have to believe it in your heart of heart, even when those people around you, those people closest to you possibly don't believe you. You have to believe it. And that's the one thing um, that you need to hang on to. And it's certainly, um, you know, during my career at times, during those dark days, dark weeks, dark months, dark years, there were times when that's all I had to hang on. You know, I had doctors and people in the professional world saying, Derek, give up. And I couldn't give up because I knew I had a lot to give and I could just give me a season, just give me two seasons and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll prove what I, what, what I can do. Um, and that, so that for me was the, the main thing that kept me going was that belief that I could achieve it. Obviously, um, in high performance sport, there is incredible amount of stress and pressure. So how do you manage? How did you manage that stress and pressure? Um, yes, I mean, good question. You know, there, there's lots of stress and pressure in everyday life, certainly in, in you know, performing at the at the highest level in sport. There's an awesome amount of pressure if you choose to let it get to you and actually if you acknowledge it. Uh, one of the things that my dad told me many, many years ago is, you know, when you're training and you're, you're, you're you know, you're with your coach, you're doing all your work and everything, you listen to your coach, you go for all the stuff, you learn your trade, you learn your craft to the best of your ability. The minute you walk into your lane and you've made that decision when the starter says on your marks and you walk to the start line, Nothing outside those that lane, those two lines matter. You just take care of your business for the next 40 something seconds. Uh, so one of the things that I always used to try and do is not let outside pressure get in involved because as a sports person and as someone who's a bit of a perfectionist, I put enough pressure on myself. And actually I put more pressure on myself than any one other individual can actually put on me. So for me, it was a case of blocking out everything else that, that goes on. So sponsors, TV, um, you know, being you know, on TV, a crowd of 70, 80, 90, 100,000 people and then millions watching worldwide. Um, yeah, I mentioned sponsors, you know, family, friends. At that moment, they've all gone out the window. 
all I'm thinking on for the first part is the start and executing my race the way that I'm supposed to. And one of the problems that, that, that uh, people are afraid of is not what they do and how well they do it, it's what other people think of them once they perform. So one of the reasons people get nervous about competing is not losing, for themselves losing, it's what other people think of them losing. That's what actually sometimes stop people from performing. Well, for that time, don't worry about what other people think about. You know, don't, it's, that's not what the issue is. What you think about. I have lost some races and been totally over the moon because I've performed as well as I could. I've also won races where I've been disappointed because I haven't run the way that I should have done. But from the outside, people see a win and they think, yeah, great. And they see a loss and they think, oh, rubbish. I remember once running in, um, uh, uh, a race in Europe in, in um, Zurich, one of the Grand Prix races. Now, if you get asked to run in the Zurich meeting, it's 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 a big thing anyway, because the guy who is the meat promoter for Zurich, he only likes taking the best in the world, the top eight in every event in the world. And I got invited um, to run in this race in Zurich, and I finished seventh, but I ran a personal best. And in the newspapers, they completely slated me for finishing seventh but I ran the fastest time I'd ever run in my life. I'd never beaten those guys before. So that was actually their problem. I was actually happy and I bounced off that track and I was happy because I'd taken another step in the direction of me becoming a, a better, you know, a better athlete. So, you know, a lot of the pressure is what we think of other people uh, will think of us. And, you know, and I, I do, in one of my presentations, I do talk about dealing with failure. And actually, you can learn from things going wrong. Um, a quick story. My dad, I would have been about 16 years of old. I was, I'd only just uh, been running 400s for a year because I started off as a 100 and 200 meter runner and I moved over to 400 and I was 15. And I was 16 years of age and I was ranked two in the country as a 400 meter runner. And the young guy who was quicker than me was from Lincolnshire. I remember his name, Kurt Morby. I'd love to know what he's up to now, Kurt Morby. And I'd never beaten this kid. He'd beaten me eight or nine times. Couldn't get anywhere near him. All I saw was the back of his head every race. And I turned up to a, a, um, a meeting in Nottingham. Me, my dad, and my coach at the time. And I'd gone into the, uh, the, the room and I've registered and all that sort of stuff. And I look at the start list. Kurt Morby's in the race. And I've gone, oh, Kurt's in the race. And my dad said, no worry, no worry. We're going to take him on. Not going to be a problem. Oh, great. Kurt's here. Then... A couple of, uh, a few minutes later, my coach turned around and said, you know what, we're going to try something different. And I said, what? He said, I want you to run the first 200 in this 400 way quicker than you've run before. Try and go with Kurt, because normally Kurt runs out quite quick. And by 200, 250 metres, he was so far in front, nobody could catch him. So my coach said, go with him. Just go with it. Go quicker than you would normally do for the first 200. And let's see what he's made of when he's got somebody with him, actually level with him as you come off that final bend down the home straight. Okay. And I was really nervous leading up to this for two reasons. One, I'm racing Kurt. And two, I've got to do something I'm not even trained for. And my dad um, picked up on this. That I was really nervous and I was getting ready to warm up. And he said, why are you so nervous? And I said, well, dad, I, you know, I've got, I've got a red Kurt and, you know, I've got to try this new thing. And my dad said to me, Derek, don't put any extra pressure on yourself. Don't worry about what anybody else is going to say. You're not going to lose this race. And I kind of looked at my dad as if to say, he does know I'm racing Kurt Morby, the guy who's beat me like nine times this year already. And I said, what do you mean? He said, look, you're not going to lose this race. One of two things are going to happen. You're either going to finish in first place or you're going to learn something. If you don't do any of those, then you've lost the race. Now, I went off like a madman. I was suicidal for the first 200. I was in the lead. And as we came into the home straight, Kurt Morby came back past me and he just pit me on the line. But it was the closest I'd been to him, point number one. Um, and then after that, um, we went away and we I had learned something. I learned that I do need to run the first 200 quicker than I used to, but not as quick as I went off in that race. So from then on, we trained and I raced by going off, uh, learning to go off at a quicker pace, but not a suicidal pace. And I did that for the next few races. And then the next time I raced Kurt, I actually beat him and he never, ever beat me again. So sometimes there is good things to be learned from actually 
losing or failing, but people are afraid of what other people think of them. And that's where this pressure comes onto them. If you can just take away your perception of what other people are going to think of you, then actually you'll take away that pressure from yourself and you will go and perform to the ability that you know that you that, that's expected of you. Because as I said before, you put enough pressure on yourself. So um, that's how I used to deal with the pressure. It's not worry about what anybody else does as long as I perform the way that I expected to. What is the hardest physical challenge you have ever faced? Oh, good question. The hardest physical challenge I've ever faced. Um, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, it's not so much a physical challenge, but the challenge of having to realise that my athletics career was over. Um, and um, I managed to uh, get from one sport to another. And I got, I got, I got into basketball and then into into rugby and then a few other sports on, along the way. Um, that was physical and mental, I would say. Um, but physical challenge. Obviously, Barcelona wasn't uh, my finest hour. Um, pulling a hamstring, you know, in the semi final of the uh, of the Olympics and mm -hmm. deciding to get up and, and and finish that. That was kind of done. Um, on anger, uh, certainly on 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 um, uh, uh, anger was part of it. I'm trying to think of a, a word that would sum all that. Emotions uh, would be one of the words. Um, that was something that sort of carried me through, and, and just the want of me wanting to finish that uh, finish that race. Um, there was some of the training that we used to do that was really tough, and one of the things that was quite uh, a physical and mental. Uh, tough thing to get through was knowing one week that you've, you you know you're, you're going to do a training session and it will absolutely break you um and when I was in the states we used to do this hill session and the hill was 450 meters from the from the bottom to the top and it was a windy road and we didn't always do 450 meter reps but we would do different reputation different sessions on that hill and it was a killer. And at the end of that session, we used to do that hill every Monday. And at the end of the session, during that session, you will have either thrown up or if you were really unlucky, you would have passed out um, because you just ran yourself into exhaustion. And, you know, there was a couple of times I fainted and passed out during that session. What didn't help was it was in a part of America called Azusa, which is in California. And it was stupidly hot out there. I mean, there was times we were training, it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit you know, 96 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was really hot. And we used to have these um, little high jump mats at the side of the road. So if you were feeling a bit lightheaded, you can go and pass out on one of these, one of these uh, mats, or you would throw up. That was standard. That was tough physically, but mentally what was even tougher was knowing that you were going back next Monday to do the same thing and have those same feelings and go through that same process again. That was sometimes tough, knowing you've got the session and, and you get there and a the coach will tell you the session or he'll tell you a few days before and you'd be like, oh man, I've got to go and do this session with Phil, with this person, that person, da -da -da -da. and it was quite a world-class uh, group that we trained with. And you knew you were going to be pushed and you knew you were going to hurt at the end of it. And you knew you were going to throw up, pass out and feel like crap for the rest of the day. But you still did it. Um, so those were some of the real tough physical and mental things that, that, that we would go through.